Council to order. Just to confirm who's on the phone, uh, Councillor Cunningham, you're there? Yep. Councillor Scott Morvin? Yep. Yeah, I'm here. Councillor Ranhawa? Yes, I'm here. Councillor Nish? Yeah, I'm here. Councillor Eighty. Yeah, I'm here. Councillor Moreau? Here. Great. And uh, we'll get started then. I'd like to call a uh, recommendation that the agenda for the regular council meeting of February 8th, 2021 be adopted as presented with the additional items of 4H, I, J, and K. I move on. Moved by Councillor Ryan Hollis. I'll second it. By Councillor Cunningham. Anybody opposed? Motion's carried. Item 3A, recommendation that the minutes of the special council meeting of January 25th, 2021 be adopted. Moved by. Councillor Adey. Seconded by. Nish. Councillor Nish. Anybody opposed? Motion's carried. Item 3B, recommendation that the minutes of the regular council meeting of January 25th, 2021 be adopted. Moved by. So moved, Barry. Seconded by. 80. Councillor 80. Anybody opposed? Motion's carried. First, we have a report from our Chief Financial Officer regarding the Prince Rupert Aboriginal Community Services grant application. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The federal government, through its investment in Reaching Home Canada's homeless strategy, has allocated funding to Prince Rupert through the Prince Rupert Aboriginal Community Services Society. This particular funding stream is intended to help communities extend their response to COVID-19 and its impact to the homeless. The city has the opportunity to access this funding through an application to the society. Besides, the, sorry, the society believes that an appropriate response to help the homeless in an effort to stop the spread of the virus is through access to a standalone 24-hour restroom facility. This would assist the public and the homeless with access to restroom facilities which would encompass certain safety characteristics and easy care maintenance. Staff have also heard from downtown merchants and service organizations who have reported use of the area as a restroom where there is not access to one. The need for improved availability for hygiene amongst our most vulnerable population and the available funding prompted staff to investigate the viability of providing this additional service in Prince Rupert, which includes the following considerations. Staff believe such a facility would be best suited on city-owned land in the downtown area to reduce the need to purchase land and be approximate location to the segment in need. The exact location would be selected after discussions with stakeholders and assessing available service connections. The capital cost of a facility meeting specific safety and maintenance characteristics including preparation, connection and installation is estimated up to $200,000 based on experiences of other BC municipalities. Grant funding is available to fund 100% of these costs. Operating costs would need to be absorbed by the city. A mid-range estimate is an increase in service cost of approximately $30,000 dependent on frequency of use, cleaning, and any necessary maintenance beyond that which would be routine. Should there be no new sources of revenue to offset this operating cost, it is presently calculated that this increase in service would result in a 0.15% property tax increase if the service was in place from the beginning of the year. Given this service would not be in place for a full year, a more conservative estimate is half of that amount be included in the 2021 budget with the other half included in the 2022 budget. Again, if there are other new sources of revenue that can be utilized, there would be no impact to taxpayers. Assisting the most vulnerable in obtaining basic hygiene during the COVID-19 pandemic provides an opportunity to help our entire community do as much as possible to stop the spread of the virus. Beyond that, making available a facility that gives those who most need it, including the general public, a dignified space to utilize restroom facilities as a compassionate service to offer and will hopefully help all those impacted. 
Council is requested to decide whether the city should pursue providing the service through the grant opportunity afforded our community and including the service as a part of the overall city service offering. Thank you. Great. Thank you. The recommendation is that mayor and council direct staff to apply for apply to the Prince Rupert Aboriginal Community Services Society for funding through the reaching uh, home indigenous homelessness stream to be utilized for acquisition and installation of a 24 hour standalone restroom. Moved by. Councillor Scott Morgan. Second by. I'll second it. Councillor Cunningham. Discussion? Yeah, like I believe this is. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Councillor Ranhauer, then Councillor Cunningham. So, so basically, um, how much we like uh, once we install? How much will it cost to city like uh, in in numbers? You have any numbers? The estimate is thirty thousand dollars, and that's a mid-range estimate based on internal um, uh, calculations through staff and also external um, municipalities who were contacted. Thank you. Councillor Cunningham? Uh, I think this is a good idea. It's long overdue. It's going to provide a, a service to not just people that are vulnerable, but people that are downtown that have to use a washroom. And right now, as a lot of people aren't even letting people into them. And uh, thirdly, I think it, it might be something that can be utilized by tourists. And as far as funding for maintenance through it, I know uh, the port has agreed to fund the first year maintenance to it, from what I understand. And uh, Community uh, Futures is looking at uh, funding or finding funding to it, too. So I think it's a win-win with the initial capital of almost a quarter of a million dollars being given to the city for this for nothing. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Other comments? So we'll be hearing more about this in the future council meeting, or? Uh, if we're directed to make the application, um, we will make the application, and if we are in uh, receipt of the grant, we will just proceed. We will proceed. Okay, sounds great. Okay, if there's no further discussion, is there anyone opposed? Next, we have a report from planning uh, regarding a development variance permit uh, twenty. 102 for 1147 7th Avenue East. Is there any comments to this uh, DVP? From staff, I mean. For a, a description at this point? Oh, Rob, you're on the phone. Uh, that's why I should have checked if, if you're on the phone. Yes, if you have a description, yes, that'd be great. Sorry, I didn't realize you were on the phone with us tonight. No worries. It's for a side yard setback on the property located at 1144 7th Avenue East. The applicant wants to build an additional story to an existing building that has the same uh, variance permitted in 2019. Currently an R2 zone permits a 1.2 meter side yard setback. The applicant is requesting a variance that would bring the additional story to the building to 0 0.5 meters from the side yard line. Uh, we do not estimate any significant impact to the neighborhood as a result from this, from this variance. However, the neighborhood will have a opportunity to provide input on this variance application. Okay, so the recommendation is that council proceeds with the statutory notification process for development variance permit application number DVP 2102 for 1147th 7th Avenue East. Moved by. Good, 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 good. Okay, moved by Councillor uh, Randhawa, seconded by Councillor Eighty. Any discussion? Is there anyone opposed? Motion's carried. Okay, next, uh, from planning as well, another D DP at 2026 for 2022 9th Avenue East. Any description to the this DP? Uh, this is Chris here again. Uh, this is an application requesting a variance for a front lot line on the property located at 220 9th Avenue East. 
The applicant wants to build a front entrance that includes a six by six foot mud room to the residence. The R2 zone permits a 3.6 meter front lot setback. The building currently sits 3.2 meters from the front lot line. With the addition of the proposed mudroom, this will, this will require a front lot line setback variance of 1.8 meters. And again, we do not estimate any significant impact to the neighborhood as a result from this variance. Uh, the neighborhood will have opportunity to provide input on this application. Thank you. So the recommendation is that council proceeds with the statutory notification process for development variance permit application number DP2026 for 222 9th Avenue East. Move by. Council I'll move it, Barry. Moved by Councillor Cunningham, seconded by Councillor Eighty. Any discussion? Anyone opposed? Motion's carried. Okay, item D, another report from planning for DP 2027 at 975 11th Avenue East. Do another description. Uh, this is Chris here. Uh, this is an application requesting a variance for a side yard setback on the property located at 975 11th Avenue East. The applicant wants to build an extension to their current residence in the rear portion of the lot. This extension will follow along the existing building setback, the side lot line of 1.1 meters. Currently, the R2 zone permits a side yard setback of 1.2 meters. The applicant is requesting a variance that would bring the new building extension to 1.1 meters from the side yard line. Uh, we don't estimate any significant impact, impact resulting from this variance, and the neighborhood will have the opportunity to provide input on this application. Thank you. Recommendation that council proceeds to the statutory no notification process for development <laughs> variance permit application DP uh, 27 or 2027 for 975 11th Avenue East. Moved by. Councillor Nish. Councillor Nish, seconded by. Councillor Cunningham. Councillor Scott Morvan. Any discussion? Opposed. Anybody opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, next report from planning as well for another DP 2029 at 1419 Sloan Avenue. Do another report for this one. Someone's microphone's on there. Maybe we can have that be turned off. Thank you. Yeah, for 1419, Chris, uh, Sloan Avenue, DP. Uh, and it's requesting a variance uh, for the maximum building height of an accessory building and a variance for the maximum floor area for an accessory building. The applicant wants to build a detached garage that's located at the rear of the building. This new accessory building has a proposed height of 5.2 meters and a proposed floor area of 90 meters squared. The current R2 zone permits an accessory building height of 3.6 meters and a maximum accessory building floor area of 70 meters squared. The variance requested will bring the new building 1.6 meters higher than the maximum allowable accessory building height and an extra 20 meters squared of accessory building floor area than what is permitted in an R2 zone. Uh, we don't estimate any significant impacts resulting from this variance. And again, the public will have, or the neighborhood will have the opportunity to provide input on the variance application. Thank you. So the recommendations that council proceeds with the statutory notification process for development variance permit application number DP 2029 for 1419 Sloan Avenue. Moved by. I'll move it. Councillor Cunningham, seconded by. I second. Second. Councillor Ranhawa. Any discussion? Okay. Anyone opposed? Motion's carried. Item F, report from planning again uh, regarding DP 2102 for 1430 to 1500 Kootenai Avenue. Any other comments to make about Mr. this Mayor? one? Yeah. Hello. Go ahead. I'd like to excuse myself. Uh, I have property close to this property. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ranawa. You're excused from this portion. Okay. Thanks. 
Chris, is there any final comments for this uh, for this DP? Uh, yeah, so this is an application for a development permit by the applicant BC Housing. The property is located at 1430 to 1500 Kootenay Avenue, and it's with it, currently within the existing residential townhome complex. This new de development proposes a removal of five existing townhome buildings and the addition of four new townhome buildings. This development will result in an overall reduction of eight dwelling units. It's worth noting that this applicant had previously applied for rezoning to a RM3 zone to achieve a higher density. However, after receiving negative public feedback towards this increase in density, the rezoning application was withdrawn. This new proposal is a result of this public feedback and it will provide a positive addition to the neighborhood with new buildings and improvements to on-site pedestrian lighting and pathways. Uh, this proposed development complies with all of the general multifamily development permit guidelines, as well as the zoning bylaw regulations and both current and draft OCP directions. Uh, with that in mind, we recommend that council approves this application. Okay, the recommendations that mayor and council approve issuance of DP 2102 for 1430 to 1500 Kootenay Avenue. Moved by. Councillor Scott Morvin. Councillor Scott Morvin, seconded by. No, I'll second it. Councillor Cunningham, discussion? Just a quick question, just to confirm the uh, the number of units being built. How, how many uh, How many in total are being, so uh, is it, I, I noticed that there was a mention of a, a lot of units. Um, was that just in the number of buildings or was that the actual dwelling units itself? Uh, so there's going to be a net loss of one building. Um, okay. And eight, I believe there's going to be a remainder total of. Uh, yeah, there'll be there'll be 20 new units and a resulting of 30. Currently, there's 38 on site. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank you very much. Other comments? I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Councilor Morrow. Uh, I understand the, the reduction of eight units from existing, um, but just given the um, changes being made to the application, considering the rezoning application, what's the net reduction in the number of units as compared to the original uh, rezoning application? Um, um, if this is Rob speaking, we actually didn't do that calculation because it, it was no longer um, a part of the application. They dropped that. Um, but it is a considerable reduction, uh, the, particularly because there was one apartment building that was removed. Yeah, which is which is I, I imagine is super super unfortunate, especially with the over over uh, saturation of uh, of dwelling units right now currently, where where multiple families are now residing in. Uh, in properties, especially in subsidized housing, the families that are being underserviced. So it's unfortunate to see uh, so much pushback from from primary uh, homeowners and things like that in the area. Um, it's uh, there's a there's a very much a, a not in my backyard mentality in every neighborhood that that seems to have a, a challenge and a difference of opinion when it comes to servicing the collective of, of our community, especially those that that have uh, don't have the, the the opportunity to express some of their concerns and voices. Uh, for me, as somebody who grew up very much in that neighborhood, it's uh, it's challenging and unfortunately to see these kind of things and these conversations take place. Although we are allowed of a, a difference of opinion, there's a there's a mitigation of now where we can kind of balance the tension of the opposites between these opinions and how can we further have these discussions so that we're not only servicing the collective of those that can can write and start petitions, but those that do not have the opportunity to speak out. And, and the ones that need this housing the most. So that's just my two cents on that. Other comments? I agree with Councillor uh, Reed, Scott Moore, with Reed. Uh, when we saw that on the Emmanuel project when people were getting evicted and uh, people were having to almost live in their cars because there was no rental available or anything and I, I think we have to look at this from a community point of view there are people out there that need this type of housing and uh, that area has traditionally had larger 
you know, units available, and this is downsizing, and they're going to be very attractive looking. And I think it's like just like Cedar Village on the east side of town here. It's very attractive, and I think it's going to add to the neighborhood and enhance it in many ways. Other comments? Okay, hearing none, is anyone opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you. Okay, next, item G, report from our corporate administrator. You want to read out the resolution from the closed meeting? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Nish and seconded by Councillor Aidy that Council appoint Chris Armstrong to the Prince Rupert Library Board to fill the recently vacated position and that Council release the resolution at a future regular meeting of Council. Thank you very much. Next, item F, uh, we have a letter of support for the Community Investment Fund application for the Friendship House, a uh, recommendation that Council direct staff to provide a letter of support for the Friendship House as requested. Moved by. Councilor Aidy. Councilor Aidy, seconded by. <laughs> Any seconders? I'll second it. Seconded Barry. by Councilor Cunningham. Okay, any discussion? Anybody opposed? Motion's carried. Next, we have a letter from our MP, Taylor Backrack, regarding a letter uh, to the Transportation Minister regarding termination of Air Canada service. Uh, recommendation that Mayor and Council support signing on to the proposed letter as requested. Moved by. Niche. Councillor Scott Morvin. Councillor Niche, seconded by Councillor Scott Morvin. Any discussion? Yeah, I think we need an airline back here. It's very hard for people to drive in the winter, and uh, its service should be started very soon. Thank you. Any other comments? We'll just thank our MP for taking on this initiative and working with us and other airline uh, airports to get moving on this file. So there's no other discussion. Uh, anybody opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, next, I. Uh, the recommendation is that council direct staff to provide a letter of support uh, to the EcoTrust uh, for uh, their urban farm to the Community Investment Fund from the Port Authority. Uh, Moved by Councilor Renhawa, seconded by Councilor Aidy. Councilor Cunningham. Councilor no. Aidy. Any discussion? Anybody opposed? Motion's carried. Item K, similar resolution. Resolution that Council directs staff to provide a letter of support. Uh, to the Prince Rupert Golf Club, to the Community Investment Fund from the Port Authority uh, for capital improvement projects to the golf course. Moved by Councillor Ndaba. Councillor Renhawa, seconded Nish. by Councillor Nish. Any discussion? Anybody opposed? Motion's carried. And item 5A. Uh, another uh, final portion here from our uh, development of approval information bylaw. So the recommendations that council give fourth and final reading to the development procedures bylaw number 3468-2021. Moved by. Nish. Councillor Nish, seconded by. Councillor Scott Morvin. Councillor Scott Morvin. Is there any final discussion about this item? Okay, is there anyone opposed? Motion's carried. Item 5B, uh, recommendation that council give fourth and final reading to the development procedures bylaw number 3469-2021. Moved by. Rindala. Councilor Renhawa, seconded by. Nish. Councilor Nish. Any final discussion about uh, the development procedures bylaw?
I'll just say that I'm very much looking forward to this new uh, way of how we go about doing development uh, procedures in the community. I think it's going to be much more uh, quick and it will be much more uh, engaging to the public and more upfront, particularly when developments first come onto the scene. I want to thank our planning team for helping us restructure that. I did a great job there. Uh, if there's no f uh, further discussion, uh, is anyone opposed? Motion's carried. Item six, is there any reports or questions or inquiries from members of council? Councilor News here. Go ahead. I just wanted to give uh, my condolences to all families, uh, people that have passed away from COVID in our community in the last week and a half here. It's a tragic event and uh, it's now hitting our community pretty hard here and we just need to do our part and try and try and uh, hold this uh, horrible COVID off. Thank you, Councillor Nish. Other comments from other councillors? Yeah. Barry here. Uh, Go just ahead. to add to uh, what Councillor Nice just said, I think it's very important right now that uh, we can curb what's happening in our town by observing all the public health uh, notices, masks, social distancing, keeping uh, groups down to a minimum and things like that. It's uh, We haven't been exposed to this. We had sort of a complacency in town and I think it's uh, it's something we've got to sit up and take notice of because it's uh, starting to get to a point where we've got community transmission now so it's something we've got to take very seriously thank you thank you I heard another yeah, voice there I'll, I'll jump in and uh, and just kind of echo a lot of what's been said already and just the condolences to the families that have lost loved ones and are now having other loved ones being affected by this virus uh, and, and just know that we're all in this together and uh, this isn't easy this is, this is something that's obviously very nerve-wracking and very stressful uh, for those of you at home that are watching and we're not really sure what to do right now uh, to those families and the loved ones that are being affected by this um, and have lost loved ones know that there are grief counselors and there are people that are available within community and within the area uh, willing to show up for you and and Get help you through this and, and navigate uh, life from here on out because we know it'll never be the same with some of the loved ones that have been lost and and there's there's no replacing that but know that that there are people here to support you um, so if you're struggling at home don't don't hesitate to reach out um, to those that can help you whether that's friends families or uh, professional guidance so I just wanted to acknowledge that and, and echo a lot of uh, the notions that have been made already thank you other comments or inquiries from council Okay, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Councillor Cunningham, second by Councillor Scout Morvin. Councillor Scout Morvin, anybody opposed? Motion's carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks.